All right, so I have a little plan here. Uh, I'll try to kind of explain what I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm not seeing anybody do this. I think it's gonna have to help. Uh, basically, this boss right here in the case is the one that usually breaks. This one can break too, but this one I think for the most part is usually okay. This one breaks pretty often whenever the starter gear has issues. Um, which I'm gonna have the updated gears, but the case is not updated like the newer machines. So, uh, the way this normally breaks, it seems like, is, you know, maybe the top third of it bust up. So, down here, I don't think has much pressure on it. it seems, when it kicks back, it seems all the pressure is pushing up. <coughs> so, and this aluminum just starts to crack and can't hold. Um, and then this down here is basically, you know, not good for anything once this starts to crack. So, I measured this with my calipers. And it's about 20 millimeters for a little bit. And it, it kind of tapers up some. So, it's not... I was hoping it would be the same size the whole way. But it's, it's kind of tapers up slowly. So... What I did was I went to the parts house and I, they found me a bearing with a 20 millimeter inside diameter. So I took the bearing and cut it apart and this is just a piece of the inner race that I took my cutoff wheel and my grinder. You can see it's not overly pretty, but it actually has a bevel along this edge, which I think is gonna make it, um, you know, go on a little easier, but my plan is to take some green bearing retaining compound, uh, Loctite, green Loctite basically, and <clears throat> smear around this aluminum. I've cleaned it up with brake clean, and then take a hammer and a socket and just peck this on there, not not just drive it on, but just peck it on until it's seated real good. Even if it were to come loose, all it could do is come back down a little bit and run against the starter gear. Just, it would just run against the back side and it would basically have oil in between it. I don't expect it would really cause any problems. But what I'm thinking is that if you've got a, a sleeve of sorts like this, and you might could have a machine shop make you something a little better if you got, you know, enough time and know somebody. Or, you know, maybe you got your own machine tools. But what I'm thinking is... This is going to have a really hard time busting out if this sleeve is tight on there and it's also pulling down here. It's going to have to break pretty much the whole boss off the case instead of just cracking and, and popping the top off of it. So, <clears throat> I really think it's got to help quite a bit. Um, I've not driven this on here yet because I just really want to do it one time if I can. So I think if I get a little green compound on there and just peck it on until it's real good and snug with my hammer and then leave it there, I think I'll let it probably set up 24 hours because that's what the compound says. Um, and basically this is what I'm using. It's the Permatex brand. It's just a sleeve retainer, high temperature sleeve retainer. I think it's good to 400 degrees, which should be plenty. And, uh, <clears throat> so like I said, I've not seen anybody do this. Um, some people, after their, uh, little boss breaks, they'll weld a piece of aluminum in the case. But, uh, I'm hoping this is going to be a real quick and easy way to get by, um, with just starting up the case without actually having to do any welding or anything. Because my boss is still good. And, uh, so we're going to give it a shot, and I'll show you me tapping it on here in a minute after I get a little green compound smeared on it. Like I said, this is, I'll post part number to the bearing I bought. This is the inner bearing race, and it's about a third of the actual, what the actual width should be. I cut it with my grinder and a cutoff wheel, so it's not, you know, it's not the best cut, unfortunately. But it doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, just for support 
of that uh, piece and it won't split out it's this is strong steel right here so <clears throat> i'll give it a shot and let you know how it works all right i've got my compound smeared around you can see it's a pretty snug fit because it's already holding itself so i'm going to get my socket just pick it a little I'm gonna call it right there. Get my phone. So you can see, I've got to clean it up now, but it's, uh, hopefully this phone will focus a little. It's past the end of the boss there, all the way around. You can see it looks like a real good tight fit. I think that's got to help support it a lot. Um, this gear is the one that's going to run there. And basically this is going to be against the end of that boss. And nothing's going to be close to that ring. So there should be no interference issues at all. So... I'll let that compound set up 24 hours because that's what it calls for. And I really think that's going to help, uh, help support that. Okay, I just got the starter back in and uh, I'll just put the new starter gear on the shaft and put it in there. And I have to say, not really impressed that they couldn't manage to make the starter fit so that it engages all the teeth that's why only part of the teeth chip off on the old gear and you can see there's a bevel on the end of the starter teeth too so they're really not even coming up as far as it looks like they might be now maybe that's plenty I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me to have that much gear and not utilize it. So, just, uh, <laughs> I think they could have done better on that. Okay, you can see those are the holes that bolt the starter to the engine block. The factory ones are actually elongated a little bit. These are not. Um, I think I'm going to take a drill bit and just try to try to elongate them a little bit if I can that way I can get some more adjustment to bring the starter into the gear. I've seen one person talk about this on uh, Wildcat Riders Facebook and I've, I think only one person's all I've seen mention the starter gear engagement but I think I'm going to go ahead and elongate this a little and I'm glad he mentioned it because I'm not sure I would have checked it. So. Alright, I used the drill bit and elongated those holes. I didn't go too far. I wanted to leave enough material to be strong. <clears throat> but I think that's going to help me at least get the most engagement I can out of my gears. So I will update when I put it, put it in. Alright, so y'all saw me uh, elongate the holes on the starter. And... Uh, I've got the starter bolted back in. I didn't show that part because it's just, I can't get any kind of view where you know what I was doing as far as putting the starter back in. And it's it's hard to work back in there with those two T30s. You just gotta feel your way around and you can kind of use a mirror and a light and see a little bit, but uh, you can't once you get your arm or something in there. So 
Um, after taking the starter out, putting it back in, and then realizing I needed to elongate the holes, so then I had to take it back out and put it back in again. I'm getting a little quicker at it, but anyway, right here is what I've got now. You can see I have pretty much full engagement with the teeth. And there's no, when I bought the case on, there's going to be no interference here. The case, you know, has enough room to come out to here. So I don't know why, I don't know why they didn't uh, make that have full engagement to start out with, especially on this update. But I, now mine's going to have full engagement, so uh, I think it's worthwhile to elongate those holes a little bit, personally.